students welcome back uh, today we are going to start with learn and calculate the amounts of elements from its composition um, explain why the idea of matter is made up of atoms is a theory by using Dalton's theory and um, by using the Dalton's atomic theory we will also learn uh, to explain atoms and molecules by the end of this chapter So let's look at the law of definite proportions. So by the end of 18th century, uh, scientists like Lavoisier and others, they observed that many substances were actually compounds. That means they were made up of two or more elements. And each compound has the same element in the same proportion regardless of the source. So here is how it started in 1799. Joseph Proust, he found that the basic copper carbonate, here's the formula of copper carbonate, regardless of how it was made, always composed of same percentage of copper, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and the percentages are listed here. So he could come up with the law of definite proportion that says a compound always contains the same elements in certain definite proportions. So continuing with the law of definite proportions, uh, here in the, uh, on the slide, you can see uh, three pictures of, uh, or three sources of copper uh, carbonate. One is the natural mineral malachite here, shown in green. Second is the patina on the copper roof. And third one is uh, copper uh, carbonate synthesized in the lab and shown uh, in, in the watch glass over here. So irrespective of the source, it could be A, B, or C, um, but the formula always remained Cu2, OH twice, Co3 thrice. So, um, and it had the same amount of copper, hydrogen, um, oxygen um, in the same proportions. So let's look at another experiment, uh, which is um, a Brazilius experiment, uh, proving uh, the same law, the law of definite proportions. So what he, what Brazil, Brazilius uh, experiment, uh, what did he do to demonstrate the law of definite proportions? He used um, uh, 10 grams of lead, 1.55 grams of sulfur, to produce 11.55 grams of lead sulfide. So uh, lead is shown here in the gray metal here. Uh, sulfur is uh, shown in yellow, so it's a yellow colored powder. And then lead sulfide is this um, black colored substance that is formed. So then what he did is he increased the amount of sulfur and he made it three grams. Um, and he observed that same amount of lead sulfide was formed, uh, which is 11.55 grams, and the extra or the, lead, uh, the sulfur, um, the extra sulfur was left unused. So that was like a leftover. And then in, in the third combination, he increased the amount of lead to 18 grams and kept sulfur the same, like, like his original experiment, so 1.55 grams of sulfur. And then he produced 11.55 grams of lead sulfide again, and the leftover or the extra um, excess sulf uh, lead was um, collected at the end of the experiment. Um, so what it shows that lead sulfide, irrespective of the source, has a definite amount of lead and sulfur. So that, com that proportion is the same. So let's look at an example of another example of law of definite proportions. Uh, here uh, we are looking at the electrolysis of water. Um, so um, here's an apparatus for, uh, to show that in the center you have water 
and by the means of electricity it's getting separated into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas and this was done by Cavendish um, and he uh, did this experiment um, and uh, it could experimentally demonstrate that um, in water the hydrogen to oxygen ratio is 2 is to 1 so we know the formula of water is H2O so there are two hydrogens per oxygen atom so 2 is to 1 and this is a classic example of a theory catching up with the experimental data so now we're going to switch gears towards learning uh, the atomic uh, theory of matter. Um, in 1803, John Dalton, um, he placed the concept of atoms in the framework of law of definite proportions. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to explain um, the theory in a bit. Uh, but here's what the law of multiple proportions says. So it, it tells you that the elements may combine in more than one set of proportions uh, with each set corresponding to a different compound and this table here demonstrates uh, perfectly the law of multiple proportions so on the table you are seeing different combinations or different proportions of nitrogen and oxygen compounds uh, made nitrogen and oxygen atoms and they lead to uh, the different proportions lead to different compounds so for example let's look at the representation first uh, the nitrogen uh, is shown by the blue ball here and oxygen is the red ball so when you have uh, two nitrogens and one oxygen you have a nitrous oxide then when you have one nitrogen and one oxygen it's nitric oxide and one nitrogen and two oxygen is called nitrogen dioxide so um, you can see here how um, the different set of proportions of nitrogen and oxygen uh, led to the formation of uh, corresponding different compounds and to go further, you can look at the mass of nitrogen per one grams of oxygen. And the mass of nitrogen is given here, the dif different uh, mass of nitrogen. And then what the last column shows here is uh, it gives you the ratio of masses of nitrogen. So 1.750 grams divided by the lowest or the smallest uh, grams of uh, nitrogen. Uh, per oxygen so you get the ratio as 4 here and um, when you divide 0 0.8750 uh, grams of nitrogen per 1 gram of oxygen um, you get 2 um, and then 0.4375 which is the grams here uh, divided by the smallest mass which is 0.4375 so you get the ratio as 1 um, so that's what this law is talking about and here we will talk about the atomic theory of matter this is Sir John Dalton um, he he came up with this uh, theory so we all know that by now that all matter is composed of extremely small particles called atoms all atoms of a given element are same or are alike and differ from the atoms of any other element the compounds are formed when atoms of different elements combine in fixed proportions so for example uh, water uh, could be compound where you have a ratio of 2 is to 1 of hydrogen and oxygen um, nitrogen dioxide is a compound where you have um, ratio of nitrogen is one one uh, and one is to two um, so one nitrogen um, and two oxygens so the compounds are formed when atoms of different elements combine in fixed proportions and a chemical reaction involves the rearrangement of atoms so these are um, some of the points of the atomic theory of matter 
So what we learned about theory um, in, in scientific method is uh, these could be um, tentative with the new data coming in, the theories are uh, can be modified. So most of what uh, Dalton's theory, uh, atomics theory talks about um, is, is, um, is the same, but some part of it has been modified uh, with the new discoveries. So, for example, John uh, Dalton, he, what did he assumed? That the atoms of the elements are alike, uh, but he did not, um, at that time, he did not know about something called as uh, isotopes. So, what is this word isotopes means? Um, they are atoms of the same element with different relative masses. So, the same element uh, could have... Um, different uh, masses and uh, um, it was not yet discovered so Dalton did not know about it and if I have to we will we will study isotopes in detail in chapter 3 um, uh, but um, for for now uh, just remember that uh, let me give you an example of isotopes so carbon C12 and C13 could be the two isotopes of uh, carbon. So what I mean is most of the carbon um, atoms have a relative mass of 12, but there is a small percentage of carbon atom which could have the relative mass of 13. And there is another isotope which is carbon 14. So, you know, these small amounts of relative masses then add up together to form the atomic masses that you see in the periodic table. And this might <laughs> sound a little bit too much, um, but we will break it down in the coming chapter. So for now, remember that uh, isotopes are the atoms of the same element. So all three are atoms uh, of the same element carbon but they have different masses like 12 13 and 14 and this slide over here um, there is a side-by-side -side comparison of what Dalton atomic theory um, originally uh, looked like and what are the different uh, mod uh, modifications uh, that happened as a uh, the new discoveries were made and as uh, new information was gathered. So the first uh, postulate of the theory was all matter is composed of extremely small and indestructible particles called atoms. So um, Dalton assumed that atoms uh, are indivisible, uh, but atoms are uh, div divisible and we will see that in the next chapter. Um, Another theory was, uh, another point in his theory was elements are made of just one type of atom, uh, which is unique to that uh, element. And uh, uh, most of it, um, what did we learn uh, in the earlier slide? Um, we, we uh, the Dalton, Dalton did assume that uh, all the atoms of given elements were identical, including the mass. Uh, but um, in the earlier slide, we saw that is not correct um, because of the some um, um, because of uh, the presence of uh, isotopes, uh, which are uh, these are these are very subtle uh, differences in the mass uh, in the subatomic scale. So uh, we are going to dig deeper in the atom and see what is atom made up of. So in the next chapter, we'll talk about something like protons, uh, neutrons, electrons. And you've heard about some of these terms if you took a science class before. Uh, so we will, um, we, we know that information now. So that's the, that's a modern modification. Um, third postulate was compounds are formed when atoms of different elements combine in fixed proportions so uh, we learned that about um, we, we we also saw the law based on that and this uh, is unmodified so this stays still the same the chemist um, 
even in today's age, agree with Dalton. Um, and the example, classic example of that is um, carbon monoxide. So carbon and oxygen, when they are present in the ratio of one is to one, this compound is called carbon um, monoxide. When there is one carbon and two oxygens, so the ratio is, um, so the ratio is uh, um, carbon uh, two is to one, that ca carbon to oxygen, then um, the compound is totally different. It's carbon dioxide. Uh, so that's what it's telling you that different compounds are formed when the different elements are combined in fixed proportions. Um, and the last one uh, was a chemical reaction involves a rearrangement of atoms, um, but there is no breaking, destroying or creating atoms. Uh, so what it means is, um, so chemical reaction has uh, reactants, I'm just gonna call it R, leading to the formation of products. Um, I'm going to call it P. So usually these reactants rearrange their atoms to form different products. And this is also unmodified and we will study chemical reactions in detail in chapter uh, five called chemical reactions. Um, but remember, uh, this does not hold true for nuclear reactions and we will look at that aspect in chapter 11. So um, this kind of gives, gives us a good um, or a thorough knowledge of the theory and what was originally proposed and how the new information or the new discoveries led to the modifications. And now we will look at uh, look at the law of definite proportions and law of conservation of uh, masses. How is it interpreted uh, by using Dalton's atomic theory? So on this um, slide, in this figure here, um, you see two types of uh, atoms you see um, oxygen, which is represented by red ball, and then hydrogen, which is represented by um, uh, gray balls. Uh, so, um, so this figure here illustrates uh, that uh, uh, water molecule, which is H2O, is formed from uh, two hydrogen atoms, so this is H and H, which is H2, and there are two of those. So um, it's like two hydrogen atoms. So two times two is four, so that's what is shown here. And you have um, one, two, and three. So there are three oxygens, and they're giving you two molecules of water and two molecules of oxygen are released. So, um, and you also notice here that the relative mass of oxygen is 16 and the relative mass of hyd uh, hydrogen is one. So let's look at the law of conservation of uh, uh, mass first. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six oxygen atoms on the left hand side. And then look at the right right hand side. So one, two, three, four, five, six so oxygen's mass is conserved. Let's check for hydrogen. One, two, three, four. And on the right hand side you have one, two, three, and four. So um so that that's telling you that the mass on the left hand side and the right hand side um, is conserved um, even though uh, the compounds look different to you right um, and um, the law of definite proportion is um, we, we learned about that that um, the water molecule is formed and it's it's in the ratio of uh, two is to one. So two here water is formed. So 
two hydrogen atoms combine with one oxygen atom to form water. So two water molecules are formed and rest of the oxygen is um, released. So we can think of chemical reactions as rearrangement of atoms uh, through breaking up and formation of uh, molecules. So uh, that's, that's how Dalton's theory explains these two uh, laws.